Simu 1.18.2 brings us some exciting new Vulcan improvements. We'll talk about what's new, and you'll see firsthand just how impactful these improvements will be to your gaming experience. I research so you don't have to. Stick around. Guess who's back? Back again. Hey, welcome back, everyone. This is my first Simu update video since 1.18, so we'll go over what's been improved since then. Over the last few Simu versions, we've seen some huge updates to the Vulkan API. These updates have improved several graphical issues and more importantly, performance. Let's be honest, running Simu on high-end equipment doesn't really demonstrate what the vast majority of us experience. Today I'm going to be showing you just how impressive these Vulkan updates are when you have older hardware like many of us do. You'll see for yourself the major improvements to shader handling, load speeds, and gameplay. To begin, let's go over the improvements and enhancements we now have in 1.18.2. General. They've updated language files. They've fixed command line help command and extractor tool. When updating graphic packs, Simu will now let the user know if previously enabled graphic packs were removed or renamed. They've improved robustness of account.dat parser to address an issue where invalid files could crash Simu on launch. Input. The DSU client now supports mapping the PS4 controller's touch field as a button. For those of you that aren't aware, that's this button. They've improved compatibility for Wiimotes in Mario Kart 8. And input now remembers IP and port for DSU client. Vulkan. They've added support for rendering with 0.1 depth range, aka half Z, which is used by Smash for shadow rendering. They've added support for fast color clear, which fixes graphics in Pokémon Tournament. They fixed a bug in the new cache which could lead to Simu freezing or crashing randomly. They've added SPIRV optimization pass, which is applied to all shaders that are compiled during the shader loading screen, which should reduce pipeline compilation stutter if a shader cache is present. It may also reduce GPU load slightly. It should be noted that this option results in different shaders being generated and consequently triggers new pipeline compilation. They've also added SPIRV cache to speed up the shader loading screen on subsequent runs. Vulkan now correctly emulates depth clamping, which fixes the overly bright backgrounds in some stages of Super Smash Bros for Wii U. Vulkan now shows an overlay notification when a Vulkan graphics pipeline has to be compiled. Alright, that covers what's new and bug fixes. If you're a visual person like myself, it's more helpful to see the improvements than to hear about them. In the following segment, you'll see the improvements to Vulcan shader handling as it applies to Breath of the Wild, the fixes to the graphical glitches in Pokémon Tournament, and the fixes to the overly bright backgrounds in Smash. I also want you to pay special attention to just how much work 1.18.2 is doing to compile shaders for the first time and just how little the gameplay is affected. Keep in mind, this is on hardware that's a few generations old. Let's go! The point is, if I can run it, then you can run it. Alright, now you're all caught up. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.